Good morning and welcome to Odoo Live. My name is Noel, Community Manager here at Odoo San Francisco. Today, I am joined by Connor, one of our business advisors, uh, to walk us through this Odoo tutorial uh, regarding Odoo invoicing. Welcome, Connor. Thank you, Noel. Uh, yeah, as he mentioned, we'll be handling the invoice application for today's webinar. So I just want to thank you guys for joining us today. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Go for it. So. First and foremost, when actually processing through the invoicing application, there are going to be a few things you do need to set up prior to actually being able to handle that flow. Uh, so today we're going to begin in one of our free applications, and one of my favorites personally, the contacts directory. So we can go ahead, pop right in. We're going to go ahead and create a new contact so that we can go ahead and send an invoice out to them and show how you can actually manage some of those customer follow-ups and make sure that your business is taking those payments without actually having to worry about any aged receivables or outstanding payments. So first and foremost, you will need to decide whether this contact will be an individual or a company. So we can just go ahead and call it a company. We can call it Jane Doe. So there's going to be a few pieces of information that are pretty integral to handling this workflow itself, uh, one of which is going to be handled under the Sales and Purchases tab. You will need to delineate between customer or a vendor. Uh, in this instance, we are going to keep them as a customer, but this is where you would be able to pick and choose between or have them set as both. Uh, one of the other important aspects of this is if you are integrating Odoo with a payment acquirer, you will be able to actually store credit card tokens. So makes it very easy for processing future payments. Uh, now under the invoicing column, this is the other very important aspect to set up when going through this. Uh, you will need to set up customer payment terms. Uh, it's not something that's compulsory. However, when you do go ahead and quote individuals, this will auto-populate those payment terms and give the corresponding due date. So in this instance, let's go ahead and set them up with a 15-day payment term. So now that this contact has been created, we are technically set to go. But before we do so, I'm just going to add a quick email address so that we can actually get that invoice sent out to them and handle the correspondence directly. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, we can go ahead, come back to the main page, and we're going to go ahead and set up a product now. So this is so that we can have an actual hard good to sell and create that workflow. So we're going to go into our inventory application and we're going to go under master data and go to products. From here, we can go ahead and take a look at our exhaustive list of products. In this situation, I do only have one here currently, so let's go ahead and create a new one. So we're going to go ahead, give it a name, new product. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of relevant information you want to set up on that product, but one thing in particular that is very important is going to be the invoicing policy, which is found under the sales tab. So you're going to want to set it up either based on ordered or delivered quantities. Uh, in this instance, let's just go ahead and keep it simple. We're going to keep it as an ordered quantity. So that means as soon as the sale order has been processed, you can go ahead and get an invoice out uh, as opposed to delivered where obviously the delivery would need to be handled prior to actually getting that invoice sent. So with that in mind, we can move forward. Of course, if you want to check any of these other tabs, there is going to be some information related to the vendor side of it as well as specific inventory routes. But for today's demonstration, that's a little bit outside the scope of what we're going to be doing. So with just that in mind, we are pretty much good to go. I am going to briefly update the quantity on hand here so that we will have actual stock to sell. So let's go ahead, take care of that. And now that we've done this, we do have 10 products on hand for this new product I just created. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to the main page. Now with these two pieces of information created, we are ready to actually go through the workflow. So we can go into our sales application, we can quote our customer, and then we can put that product into that quotation, get it transferred into a sales order, go into the invoicing, and then take a look at how you can actually follow up and stay up to date with all of those invoices from your customers. So let's go ahead and create a new quotation. So as you can see here, of the bold lines, this makes it a mandatory field, is going to be for the customer itself. So we can choose Jane Doe, the customer we just created. 
You can see the payment terms actually auto-populate directly in. It's a very nice feature, just having all of the information you've already preset on the contact itself populate directly in. Just saves you some time when processing future orders. Now we're going to add a product to the actual order line section. So we can go ahead and choose our new product that we did just create. As you can see, it does populate in that information as well. I didn't set a price on it earlier, so we're just going to sell it for $1 in this instance. However, Odoo is very, very flexible. If you were interested in actually altering that price from the product level, you can simply click on this green dialog box, pop it open, and let's give this a new price of $100. You can go ahead and save that. And as you can see here, the product line has updated with the corresponding price that we just set. So you can now see that we have $100 plus the taxed amount. So we're going to go ahead, save this quotation. You can send it out by email, of course. This will send directly to the customer, either as a PDF or as an online quotation. If you're using those payment acquirers that I mentioned earlier, you will be able to actually accept those payments directly online and transfer them directly to your bank account, all with the ease of using Odoo. So we're going to go ahead and send this out. And... Assuming the customer is happy with what they saw in that quotation, we can go ahead and confirm this sale. So by confirming the sale, it is actually going to generate a couple of action items that we will now need to handle. There's going to be a delivery, and there's also going to be an invoice that needs to be created. And if you recall, we did set up the actual uh, product to be invoiced based on ordered goods as opposed to delivered. So in this instance, we're going to handle the invoice first. So one of the nice things about Odoo is the very linear progression of the workflow. Um, so we are able to actually create the invoice directly from this page. We started off as a quote, generated a sale order, and now we can move into that invoice. You can also simply access any of your invoices just from your orders to invoice in the to invoice column. So we can click in here, and we will be able to see that same exact invoice right here for Jane Doe, sale order number three. So we can click into that. Again, we can create the invoice. Odoo allows you to create invoices in a number of different ways, whether it be with a down payment as a fixed amount or as a percentage, or just a classic invoice. So in this instance, let's go ahead and just create the classic one. We can go ahead and create the invoice, have a new action button populate directly on the form itself, and we can follow along with those breadcrumbs. So now that we're on the invoice itself, we can go ahead and print this and send it out to our customer just as a simple invoice without a payment. We can also validate this and send it out as an email. So validating this will move it from a draft state to an open state. So we can go ahead and handle that validation. As you can see here, we can now actually send this out to our customer by email. So that's one of the really nice things about Odoo is it's got a very, very easy workflow. It's a very intuitive system and you'll be able to have a correspondence directly with your customer very simply. So you can go ahead and send this by email. It will populate all of that information into the chatter section, and it, of course, will be able to be uh, handled in a kind of a mutual uh, workflow in terms of the customer will be able to see that they will have the ability to actually take a look into the chatter section and respond back to your emails so that you can keep a nice correspondence and make sure everything's being handled in a timely fashion. So let's go ahead and send this out by email. If you recall, I did put a email on the contact form itself. I will actually be logging into that email just to show you how that will populate directly into the customer's uh, inbox itself. So let's go ahead and send this out. Now I'm going to open up a new window here. This is through the Gmail account of the customer, Jane Doe. So you can see right here, I did just receive a new email with my invoice itself. You can see to Jane Doe, invoice number four, with the reference for the sale order itself that we were just working on. I can at any point take a look at this invoice. This is, of course, from the customer perspective, and you'll be able to access that information. You can also simply reply to this email. And this email will populate directly into, oops, sorry, let me get this page out of here. That email will populate directly into the actual chatter section on the invoice itself. So let's go ahead and refresh this page. 
And now you can see the email from Jane Doe. Please provide me with a pro forma invoice. I can go ahead and send back a message. And if we were to go back into our inbox from the customer side, we will be able to see a new email has been populated. I will get this taken care of later today. This makes it a very seamless workflow in terms of actually being able to keep up that correspondence with your customers and make sure that everything is staying above board in terms of getting those invoices and payments registered on time. There are also a number of other ways you can actually interact with your customers, one of which is using follow-up levels. So within the actual invoicing side of the system, if you come to the invoicing application and come to configuration, you will find there is a field for follow-up levels. And follow-up levels essentially help you to have automated actions take place based on a preset number of days or trigger conditions. So currently, out of the box, you are going to have a few different follow-up reminders set. So a first reminder email sent after 15 days. Of course, you can have a secondary one and a third one. And of course, if you'd like, you can create your own at any point in time. So if you want to have one be sent immediately after a sale, you can do so. Just change it to one day after overdue, new customer email, of course, and you can edit any of this information in terms of the email template that's sent out. Using these relational IDs right here, it'll populate in the actual customer name, any due dates, signatures, any pieces of information that you'd come to expect to have within a template. So we can go ahead and save and close this. We now have a new follow-up action. So we can go ahead and save this and use those follow-ups for the future instances. So one of the other really nice things about Odoo in the invoicing system is the ability to basically filter based on your different invoice types. So we can come into the invoicing. So based on the status of the invoice itself, you will be able to filter whether it's in a draft state or in an open state or even a paid. This allows you to really segment out that information so you can always stay on top of them. And of course, you can take a look in a calendar view as well just to see when the next invoices are going to be due. This makes it a very seamless process for just making sure that you always are reminding your customers when their payments are going to need to be actually registered. If you want to check out your invoices from this section, again, you can simply come to the sales header, come to customer invoices, and it will bring you back to that main list. If we want to go ahead and register the payment from Jane Doe, we can do so. We can simply just register the payment directly from here now that we've had this nice correspondence and register it to our bank. And again, like I mentioned earlier, Odoo does allow for online synchronization with your bank account. So if you are using those payment acquirers and taking online payments, you'll be able to funnel those directly through to your bank account and never have to miss a payment. So we can go ahead and validate that. It'll move from an open to paid status making it very, very easy to actually keep track of those reports. As well as, any outstanding payments will be reported on as well using the aged receivable section. So we can click directly in. We can filter based on whatever timeline we'd like. So as of today, we can see that there are actually two invoices open that are past their paid or their payment terms. Uh, one for John Doe and one for a test contact. Uh, with Odoo being a very flexible solution, you can kind of f uh, just follow along very smoothly through that. So if you want to actually view the invoice in question, you can just click on it and view the invoice itself. It will bring you directly into the page. John Doe said he would give me a call today, so we're still waiting on that uh, to receive that payment. So let's go ahead and actually register his payment just so we can get this taken care of. And that will be in the paid column as well. So one other really nice thing about Odoo itself is the ability to have portal management. So if you'd like your customers to actually be able to view any of those chatter sections uh, in a little bit more detail than just receiving the email notification, you can do so. You can just come to their contact form, come to action, 
and go to Portal Access Management. This will make them a read-only user. They're not going to be able to make edits to the system. They won't be able to see any of your uh, kind of secretive data, but they will be able to see those chatter sections that they are tied to as followers. So you can give Portal Access Management qu quite simply. Uh, you just need to go to the action, grant it, and use the Portal button right here. Once it's been applied, they will have an email sent out to them, giving them access to the system. And one last thing I do want to show is just the ability to keep track of those historical records as well. Uh, John Doe is the payment we did just register, and you can see on their contact form in this top header under the Smart button that an invoice has been paid. You can keep track of any historical records using these contact directory buttons. It is a very nice tool just to kind of keep a very customer-centric uh, record itself. And you can click directly in, and you'll see that same invoice that we were just working on. So that pretty much is all we have to show today. Um, it's a very simple workflow. If there are any questions at all, please do feel free to uh, fire them off. Noel and I are happy to answer anything. Yeah. Uh, well, it looks like we don't have any at the moment, but I'll give people a few minutes uh, to see if they have any last minute questions. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that we are gearing up for our last uh, tour event here in the States. It's going to be right here in our offices in San Francisco. Connor, will you be here this evening? Yes, I uh, should be here this evening, as with uh, the rest of my team on the direct sales. Uh, we should be having a pretty pretty nice event tonight, so feel free to come out if you are local to the Bay Area. Yes, uh, yeah, and you can find information for that uh, at and all of our Odoo Tour events at odoo.com slash events. Uh, of course, this is also, thank you, Connor, we're going to be, this is our last English webinar for three weeks. We're going to be oh. off <laughs> for a little while while we get ready for Odoo Experience and unveiling our new Odoo version 12, uh, which is also, uh, which is going to be unveiled in October, uh, the first week in October, I believe. October 3rd, I believe, is the, yes. the showing. But. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, with that being said, don't have any last minute questions. So thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can stay up to date on uh, all of the webinars that we present. And of course, if you found uh, this webinar useful. And if you have any last minute questions, any that we didn't get to today, you can send an email to webinars at odoo.com or you can send one directly to Connor. And what is your email address? My email is C is in Connor, F is in Frank, R is in red at odoo.com. Great. So with that being said, uh, we will see you all next time. Thank you.